Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. My name is Dokas Yakubuzala, bringing you trending stories that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today, and also their opinions on such issues. Peter Obi backs planned nationwide protest once against violence. Refs to seek Kiari sacking over Dangote refinery ordeal. Accounts for missing 100 billion naira dirty notes, group tells CBN. Olympics commentator sacked over sexist remark. Now, top on what's trending, the Labour Party's presidential candidate for 2023, Peter Obi, has expressed his support on Sunday for the nationwide protest scheduled for August. Obi, the former Anambra state governor, said the Nigerian constitution allows room for protest as it is the right of citizens. He, however, warned against violence, saying such demonstrations should be done within the confines of the law. Obi identified hunger and hopelessness among the youths as the sponsors of the protest, calling on the Nigerian authorities to engage and give a listening ear to the protesters. Now, responding to that, someone said, are your children going to participate in the protest? Another person said, the most intelligent and peaceful politician in this country. Another person wrote, people will suffer, shops will be on fire, and where will he be? Now, a spokesperson for the Labour Party presidential campaign organization, Kenneth Okonkwo, has criticized the party's presidential candidate in 2023, Peter Obi, on his approach to party matters. Okonkwo, who joined the Labour Party in 2022, accused Obi of failing to resolve the internal crisis rocking the party. According to the movie maker turned politician, Obi did not do enough to build the party and solve the party's leadership crisis. Every member of the Labour Party is confused today as to the future of the Labour Party because of lack of leadership from Peter Obi over the party. And unfortunately, when they look up to me to tell them about Peter Obi's standpoint, I sincerely have nothing to tell them because I don't know myself, he said in a letter posted on X. I cannot continue to speak on behalf of a leader that I do not know his stand on issues of great importance. I simply don't know how to manipulate facts. I am shocked that Peter Obi could not openly support the noble effort of the labor unions who founded the Labour Party as a base to fight for the welfare of workers to the extent that some of them are openly saying that Peter Obi is now the problem of Labour Party, he added. Now, someone alleged, Peter Obi has always been an opportunist in his entire political career. He's always looking to join a political party built and nurtured by others, but never willing and lacks the leadership quality to build a political party. He did the same at Abga, dumped Abga to join the PDP upon the completion of his two term as governor. He left PDP after saying that he's not going to be handed the party presidential ticket. He jumped into Labour Party and now after he had destroyed Labour Party, he's looking for another party to move to to destroy. He's all about his selfish personal ambition to be president. Another person said, Kenneth Okonkwo left APC. What was his reason? Now that he has left Labour Party, he'll join another political party and still have another reason to leave. Another opined, Peter Obi is not an activist. There are roles for everyone to play. A tree cannot make a forest. He is not the only leader in that country. There is already an evil plot to give the dog a bad name for its eventual slaughter. P Obi is wise and wisdom is profitable to direct. And the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nye Somwike, says he is yet to get a letter requesting the usage of the Eagle Square for a planned protest bill to start from August 1st. Wike spoke on Saturday at a town hall meeting with critical stakeholders in the FCT ahead of the demonstrations, which is tagged hashtag and bad governance protest. He said that no letter was sent to his office requesting to use Eagle Square for the planned protest. The FCT minister said the protesters should not just make use of social media to send a message to his office. He advised them to rather pass through the appropriate channels Wike had earlier warned against the protest. For those who want to protest on the 1st, FCT is not available for such protests, he said, while urging residents to cease from embarking on such acts. Now someone said, did we receive a letter of hunger from you guys? Another said, you can keep it, sir. We no need them. We will protest on the road. We have massive space for massive protests, sir. Another person wrote, why are they so bothered about a harmless and peaceful protest? 
Now, still talking about the protest, Senator Rabiu Musa Konkoso, a former governor of Kano State and a national leader of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, has called on Nigerians and youths to use the power of the ballot box to resolve the country's current economic hardship. The NNPP helmsman spoke on the background of planned nationwide hunger and hardship protests by youths. In a statement published on his official X handle on Saturday, Konkoso said that although the idea of a protest resonates with him, Nigerians should rather be patient with the Bolatinibu government and give it all the necessary support to succeed. Now someone said, but that's not true. Our ballots are not our true intentions. What we vote for and what we get is never the same. Another person said, it's noteworthy that the Red Cap supporters passionately protested in Kanu following the tribunal's decision on Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf's removal. However, it's concerning to see that some KNSG officials resorted to threatening judges. Now their leader is urging Nigerians to refrain from protesting against the current hardships and APC's governance. This highlights the importance of consistent advocacy for peaceful expression and accountability regardless of political affiliations. Next on was trending, Folasha De Tinubu Ojo, daughter of President Bola Tinubu and Iyaloja, General of Lagos, has urged market women in Dosumu Market Lagos to advise their children against participating in the planned August 1st hunger protest. In a viral video on Sunday, Tinubu Ojo spoke with market women in Yoruba, urging them to warn their children about the dangers of protesting, citing the destruction caused by previous protests, including the NSAS demonstration. She emphasized that the Lagos state government has made significant progress and deserves support. Tinubu Ojo also noted that the federal government, headed by her father, should be given time to prove itself before being criticized. This is coming as part of a broader effort to discourage citizens from participating in nationwide protests sparked by economic hardship and soaring food prices. Since the protest was announced, Tinubu has met with various stakeholders, including religious leaders, traditional rulers, governors, and security agencies. Now, a netizen said, Madam, tell your daddy Nigerians are hungry, or are you not a mother? Another person said, this is very disappointing coming from someone who claims to be a Democrat. While I'm not encouraging coming out for, pro for a protest, knowing the peculiarities of our nation, Nigeria, it is not in her place to tell people to come out or not. They were begging people to come out to cast their votes. Now they are telling people not to protest. Hypocrisy. It is not well-meaning Nigerians that burned and looted properties. It is the hungry, evil area boys that they created and enabled for the political violence that burned houses. Stop lying to us, madame. Another person opined, this protest that people are planning would end up in looting, vandalism, theft, and violence. There are more bad eggs than good ones. It will be hijacked by the bad eggs, and it will turn out to be another thing. Yes, it is our right to protest, but let us look at the end of this from the beginning. Now let's take a short break, and when we return, you will get to know why a Nigerian athlete was suspended from the Paris Olympics. Stay tuned. Welcome back, it's Newsfeed. Now, the House of Representatives has vowed to call for the sack of the Group Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari, if he continues to work against the smooth operation of the Dangote refinery. Deputy Spokesman of the House, Philip Agbese, disclosed this on Saturday while briefing journalists in Abuja, the nation's capital. This is just as the Benue lawmaker stated that the legislative body had already expressed support for the call to sack the Chief Executive officer of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, Farouk Ahmed. According to the All Progressives Congress legislator, both the NNPCL and the NMDPRA have demonstrated their intentions to work against the Dangote refinery. Now someone said, why is this man and INEC chairman still in power? Tinubu is using his hand in spoiling his government. Later, they will threaten Nigerians not to protest. Another said, it's not enough to unbundle NNPC. The new head of NNPC and his team of directors should sign undertaking to make the refineries work within one year, regulate fuel prices immediately. Another said, it's long overdue. The man is worse than a mefele. Now, next on what's trending, the Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, CERAP, has asked the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to account for over 100 billion naira 
dirty and bad notes and other large sums of cash awaiting examination which are kept in various branches of the Apex Bank. In a statement issued on Sunday, Kolawole Oluwadare, the deputy director of Serap, criticized the Apex Bank for not providing information about the location of the mentioned amount. He said the group approached the Federal High Court in Lagos seeking an order to compel the CBN to direct and compel the CBN to explain the whereabouts of the over 100 billionaire dirty and bad notes kept in various branches of the Central Bank of Nigeria since 2017. Serap also wants the court to direct and compel the CBN to explain the whereabouts of the 7.2 billionaire meant for the construction of the CBN Duse branch building in 2010 and the 4.8 billionaire meant for the renovation of the CBN Abekuta branch in 2009 and to publish the names of contractors who collected the money. Now, a netizen said, now I see why there are so many dirty notes in circulation. Another said, it's a dirty stolen Naira that is causing this inflation. Too much Naira notes in circulation without production to back the economy up. Another person opined, all these dirty notes are still in circulation. I got one yesterday. A Nigerian boxer, Cynthia Temitayo Ogun Shemilore, has been suspended from the Paris Olympics for violating an anti-doping rule, the International Testing Agency said Saturday. A sample collected from the boxer has returned an adverse analytical finding for a specified prohibited substance, the ITA said in a statement. Furosemide is classified under diuretics and masking agents by the World Anti-Doping Agency, the ITA, added. The sample was collected in Paris on Thursday, a day before the Olympics opening ceremony, and reported by a WADA accredited laboratory on Saturday. Now, responding to that, someone said, I am sure she must have taken one Agbo, which shouldn't have caused this ban. I don't think she would deliberately get involved with any banned substance. Unfortunately, no one will fight for her. Another said, oh my, what kind of stumbling on a way to greatness is this? Now, a veteran sports commentator has been sacked from the Olympics role after making a sexist remark about Australian female swimmers following their gold medal win, Molly. The team beat the U.S. and China in the 4 by 100 meters freestyle relay team event on Saturday. As the athletes were making their way off the pool deck, Bob Ballard said they were finishing up, adding, you know what women are like, hanging around doing their makeup. His co-commentator and British swimming champion, Lizzie Simons, immediately branded his remark outrageous, prompting laughter from him. The clip quickly went viral and broadcaster Eurosport later said he had been removed from the commentary lineup. Ballard is yet to comment publicly on his remarks. Now responding to that, someone said, I'm a woman and I'm not offended. Slightly funny, making a big deal out of nothing. Another said, good, set a precedent. These are professional athletes and deserve the utmost respect. Another wrote, why so sensitive? It's just a joke and he's probably right. Many female athletes do their makeup. Get over yourselves, wokies. And now to a compilation of Kids Gone Wild. Take a look. <laughs> and that's it you're up to date with trending stories across the world follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms facebook youtube instagram and x until next time goodbye